Hey guys, what's up? This is Tom. Welcome to churchvid.tv where it's all about helping you live life abundantly as a disciple of Jesus Christ. So today I thought I would just share my personal story with you about my faith. My story begins 31 years ago. Ugh, I'm old. I was born in Bogota, Colombia. And at the time, my mom was struggling to provide for me and my older brother. So she made an incredible sacrifice and put me up for adoption when I was about six months old. After that, I grew up in northern New Jersey as an only child, where I became a fan of the New York Giants. Woo -woo! You know, growing up, my mom made sure that we always went to church on the weekends. Going to Mass, I always remember being bored. I can remember at one point making fun of the priest because the way he would do the Eucharistic prayer, it would be like, The body of Christ. And I was just like, oh my gosh. I remember making fun of this priest to my mom as we were leaving church one day. And I remember her being like, shh, because she was afraid that he heard me. He probably did. So as a young middle school boy, I did the only thing I could think to do to not be bored at church. I became an altar server. I became a Jedi. I mean, hey, it was something to do during church. One of my fondest memories of being an altar server is looking out into the congregation and seeing my father there smiling at me and I knew he was proud of me. Fast forward to high school, I went to Catholic school all my life and I remember my dad being so proud of me getting into this competitive school. But like any teenager, I didn't always show my dad the respect he deserved. I can remember him driving me to the bus stop and he would ask me, how was school yesterday? Fine. What'd you learn? I don't know. What are you gonna do today? Nothing. But I always knew that my father loved me. When I was a freshman in high school, my father died. He died of a blood clot to his lung that he suffered after having surgery because he had fallen and broken his ankle a few weeks earlier. I can remember going to the hospital and it was so surreal. I remember the doctor coming out and apologizing to my mom and to me saying, I'm sorry, we did everything we could. And in that moment, I just remember quietly in my heart saying, God, I've heard people call you father. You can be my father now. And it wasn't this great grandiose voice in my head. I see the light and there's the angels. Oh. But instead it was just this still quiet voice that I knew God had heard my prayer. A few months later, my campus minister invited me to go to a youth rally. And I was like, more church? Heck no. But then he said, there'll be girls there. And I was like, church? Heck yes. I remember getting off the bus at this conference and people were like, welcome to Stubenville. And I was like, these people are crazy. I remember crowds of teenagers being like, we love Jesus, yes we do. We love Jesus, how about you? And I just thought they were all weird. But as the conference continued, I started to hear the speakers talk about God. God in a way I never heard before. I heard that God had a plan for my life. I heard that his plan was not for me to be lame or weird, but instead God wanted me to be who he created me to be and to be that well. God wanted me to succeed. God wanted me to be the best version of myself. And so Saturday night at this conference, we had Eucharistic adoration. And while a lot of people around me were crying or they were laughing or they were just having these emotional experiences, I can remember specifically not feeling anything inside. I felt peaceful, but at the same time, I wasn't sure if what was going on was real. It was in that moment that I remember looking just above the altar where Jesus was, my father looking at me just like he looked at me when I was an altar server with pride. And I knew I was where I was supposed to be. Now throughout high school, I struggled to live out my faith. One of the most difficult areas for me to live out my faith was in my relationship with girls. Not that I was a player or anything, but I remember purity being a struggle because I wanted so badly to love others, but I didn't have any other way to express it than through my body. And so I was challenged to show love in a way that also was respectful of someone else. And so two years later, I returned to the same conference and I met a girl. This girl was unlike any other girl I'd met before because she was so full of her own faith in God. It was incredible. That year we continued talking on AOL Instant Messenger, old people Snapchat, and then we returned to that conference again, but this time as leaders. And it was on the leadership team that we got to know each other even more. 
and we started dating. We dated throughout our senior year of high school and ended up going to the same college together. And it was in college with this girl by my side that my faith went to the next level. I found a group of friends that wanted to share their faith with others and so we formed a band. We started leading confirmation retreats and it was just an amazing season of my life with respect to ministry. Junior year of college, I got engaged and we were married as soon as we graduated. But with marriage and children quickly after, my faith had to mature even more. Today, my wife and I have been married for almost 10 years. We have five children and God has challenged me every day to grow in my faith, to grow in patience, to grow in love, to grow in loving others. And it's through my children and through my family that God shows me even more how he loves us like his children. I hope that this testimony gives you hope. I hope that this testimony gives you perspective that no matter what season you are in right now, God is with you and God's plan for you never changes. God wants us to be the best version of ourselves and he wants us to recognize the only way for us to do that is in and through him. We have to cling to the Lord for his help because he wants what's best for us. And although we spend the majority of our lives running away from him, he is always there. He never leaves us. So my brothers and sisters, wherever you're at with your faith right now, if you're super close to God, then praise him. If you're far away from the Lord and you could care less what he has to think, then I pray that you would give him a chance. Because when you give God a chance, that's when you begin to live life abundantly. Peace.